Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about voting and strategy. This serves as the introduction to the course, and rather than giving you a big long speech, let's just jump in head first and talk about why we should care. Well, voting is everywhere. This was most apparent three weeks ago in the United States when there was a presidential election and millions of people went out and voted and determined that Barack Obama would be president of the United States for the next four years. So when you think of the word voting, you're probably thinking of politics, but voting has tons of applications outside of the realm of politics. So if you're interested in business, then think about shareholder meetings. Some companies will determine who their CEO is by a vote at a shareholder meeting. So voting matters if you care about who's going to be CEO of your company. Voting matters if you care about sports. Think about college football rankings. Right now, Notre Dame is the only undefeated team in the country that is eligible to play in the national championship game, with apologies to my friends at The Ohio State University. And they're the unanimous number one team in the country, so they're going to play in the national championship game. But there are a ton of one-loss teams, teams with just one loss, that have a legitimate claim to play against Notre Dame in the national championship game, but only one team can end up doing that, and the way we determine who that one other team is going to be is through a vote. So voting matters if you care about who's going to be playing in the national championship game. Voting matters if you care about postseason sports awards. The Cy Young and the MVP were just handed out in baseball uh, just, uh, I guess, a week ago or so, and those are determined by votes. Likewise, if you're interested in entertainment, So movies, TV, music, and musicals, Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, and Tonys are all determined by a vote. So voting matters, and how you vote can affect an outcome of an election. So think about Florida in 2000. This is the classic example. We have an election that's basically between Al Gore and George W. Bush, pictured in the middle and on the right. And whoever was going to win Florida in this election was going to become president of the United States. Well, Al Gore got 2,912,253 votes. George W. Bush got 2,912,790 votes. So just a few hundred votes separated these two guys. Meanwhile, Ralph Nader, pictured stunningly in black and white on the left, received 97,488 votes. So if even a few hundred, a group of a few hundred individuals who were voting for Ralph Nader, if they had switched their vote over to Al Gore, that would have switched the outcome of the presidency. So it wouldn't have been George W. Bush who was president from 2000 to 2004, it would have been Al Gore. So votes matter. How people vote matters. Voting also matters in a different context, in creating voting systems. So, for example, imagine that you were the head of your company and you just went public and you had to determine the rules for voting at shareholder meetings. Then how you determine those rules, how you create those rules, will affect the types of outcomes that you'll get afterward. And this is most important, I think, not in this system of business, but In what we've been doing as the United States for the last 12 years, where we go invade a country, overthrow the guy in power, come up with a new system, tends to be a democracy, and have rules about how that democracy works. So constitutions of geopolitically important countries, we create those voting systems. As the United States, we're doing that. We're creating how these countries vote. And how these countries vote determines the kind of outcomes that they'll get. So imagine, going back to Florida 2000, that rather than have just a one-shot election like it was in 2000, that you have a one-shot election or you have a, a first election where everyone goes and votes for all the candidates, whoever they want to vote for, and then after that, we take the top two vote getters and we run another election and you can only vote for those two guys. So if that had been the case in Florida, then instead of having Ralph Nader receive 97,488 votes, In the second election, no one could vote for him, and because Ralph Nader was a liberal, and so was Al Gore, presumably most of those votes would have gone from Ralph Nader to Al Gore. Probably some of them would have gone to George W. Bush as well, but, you know, just assume that all 97,488 votes go from Ralph Nader to Al Gore, then what happens after that is that in this runoff election, lo and behold, Al Gore wins now. He's over 3 million votes. George W. Bush is still under two mil- or under 3 million to 290,000 something votes. And so Al Gore becomes the president. So if you take two different systems where you just have in this first system, a vote where everyone can vote for anyone. And then a second system where you first vote for anyone and then have a runoff between the top two 
vote getters of the first election, you end up with a different outcome, where in one outcome we had George W. Bush as president, and in another outcome we had Al Gore as president. So the types of voting systems that you create actually matter. They partially determine who's going to be, in this case, president, but in other cases, who's going to win whatever is at stake. So we should care about the types of voting systems that we create and what kind of things that they'll lead to, like George W. Bush becoming president versus Al Gore becoming president. So that's why you should care about voting and strategy. Now, if you're with me so far, then you're going to be interested in the prerequisites for the course, and you'll be happy to know that there aren't any. If you know game theory, though, it's going to help. We'll be looking at a lot of strategic models, and the way we study strategic interaction is by looking at game theoretical models. And so if you haven't seen this before, then I recommend that you go check out my other series, Game Theory 101, which will help you understand a lot of that. But the good news is that if you've never heard of game theory in your life before, we're going to be looking at the world's simplest models possible, because I don't want to overwhelm you with math. That's not the point of this course. The point of this course is to understand the logic. So we're going to be looking at the simplest models we possibly can, so we can understand the logic of what's going on in these models of strategy and voting. So I hope this sounds interesting to you. We'll be doing a lot more of this later on. And that wraps up this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. And in the next video, we'll take a quick look at what we'll be covering over the course of this class. That's all I got. Take care, and I'll see you next time.